Welcome to episode 4 of our Red Sea Cruise Vlogs. In this episode, we transit the Suez Canal, and Paul was really happy when the alarm went off at 5.30. So today, we got up at stupid o'clock. What time? Half past five. Half past five. We've only actually been in for about... Four, four hours. hours. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mark and Marie, yeah. <laughs> for being a bad influence on us yesterday, but we had a great time. Um, but here we are on the Suez Canal, um, and we've come back to watch the sunrise, which has been beautiful. And it's really well. It's yeah. It's been it's been an experience. I'm gonna say. <laughs> so this is what our first Arabian sunrise looked like. We thought we were going to be quite lonely up on deck, but as it turned out, half the ship had the same idea as us. With classical music playing, it was a wonderful atmosphere to watch the sun rise over the Arabian desert. However, it all proved a bit too much for Paul. If you've been watching our vlogs, you know he's a lover of early mornings. We carried on enjoying the views from the island's buffet, where we also enjoyed some Danish pastries and a cup of tea. We decided to head back to the cabin and do some videoing from the balcony, but as you can see, that didn't turn out very successful. In the short time that it took us to walk back to our cabin, we couldn't believe that the fog had rolled in, and as you could see, we couldn't see anything. It was quite eerie sitting out on the balcony, and all you could hear was the ship's foghorn. Feeling tired and a little bit scared, we decided to go back to bed and have a little nap. <laughs> Feeling refreshed after our nap, we were glad to see that the fog had lifted. Right, for all you history buffs, here is a few facts and figures about the Suez Canal. Construction started in 1859 and it took 10 years to complete. It's 120 miles long and there was an estimated 1.5 million people involved in its construction. Formally opened on November the 17th, 1869, the first ship through was the British Navy ship, the HMS Newport, captained by George Nares. Today, an average of 50 ships navigate the canal daily, carrying more than 300 million tons of goods per year. After a couple of hours of admiring the view, we decided it was time for lunch. In our previous vlogs, we mentioned how disappointed we were with how close together some of the tables for two were. However, we rectified this problem by having a good walk around the restaurant when it was closed to see which were the best tables to choose if you want to on your own. And just so you know, the winning numbers are 10, 102, 144, 142, 140, 141, 9, 60 and 64. And today we're having lunch at number 60. To start we decided on the meatballs in a fragrant tomato sauce and then we had this. This is a discovery burger. I'm glad I discovered it. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling very contented after our lunch we left the dining room and had a walk around the promenade deck.
cabin and we spent the next couple of hours chilling out on the balcony watching the Egyptian landscape go by. We really enjoyed waving at all the passing soldiers and fishermen, but one thing we didn't enjoy was all the passing flies. We would definitely recommend that you keep your balcony door closed when passing through the Suez Canal. We've had the best day today cruising the Suez Canal. Uh, we're now at the other end and we're just about to go and do the quiz. So, uh, And what are we doing now? We're doing the progressive quiz. Yes. And Aaron tells me he's found a hashtag for our team name. Has he? Yeah. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome into the live room. As Aaron said, it is now time for today's progressive quiz. We've done four already and tomorrow is the final. But every day at five o'clock they do a thing called the progressive quiz, which uh, the reasons for the progressive quiz is um, it runs for five days. Well, for the duration of the cruise. Well, for the duration of the so first. So an accumulative. The first, yeah, but it runs for the duration of the first leg of the cruise. Yeah, five Obviously days. there's going to be some more people getting on. Um, every day it's different subjects. Um, there's 20 questions, 200 points available. And then... You're before, on a board. Yeah, there's a, there's a, um, a big screen at the on the stage where all the scores are displayed proudly. And um, we missed the first day, unfortunately, but um, we've done the last two and we've now made it to the dizzy heights of 22nd out of about 50 teams. So considering yeah. we missed the day, we're quite pleased with that. Last Some day the, tomorrow. Last day tomorrow. Some of the questions are quite silly. A lot of the questions are very difficult, but it's, it's, re it's a really good laugh. So yeah. we, do, we do try and get down here every day for that. Are you here? I'm yeah. glad you're here because looking around the room, that could have been anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we've still got P&O and um, hashtag Paul and Carol love to travel there at 21. Yay. After appearing not to have done very well in the progressive quiz, we headed to bar 11 for some pre-dinner drinks. Bar 11 is a quiet place to sit in the day and early evening, but come night time, it's the place for the disco. Right then, it's uh, evening meal time or dinner as posh people call it in restaurant 47. Um, I'm going to go for the Mediterranean Bisque which is a rich seafood cream soup flavoured with cumin and star anise. And for my main, I'm going to have Angus beef roast with Chateau potatoes, Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Seasonable vegetables, roast gravy, and of course, radish. We've got table uh, 140, which is in a really nice spot, as you can see, obviously, around the restaurant there. So, Paulie, I will let you know what I'm going to have now. So, I'm going to have some um, broccoli soup, and then I'm going to have the seafood thermidor, which is morsels of crab, corn, scallops and milk fish in a creamy white mushroom sauce and cheese sauce with golden breadcrumbs, new potatoes and buttered squash. So we'll let you know how we get on. And this is the man who's in charge of looking after us. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, broccoli soup and Paulie Morgan's. What is it? It's a seafood bisque. Seafood bisque. So here is our choice of desserts. We've got warm chocolate brownie, vanilla and whiskey custard, with pineapple compote, coot malaga, so compote, ah, compote, <laughs> coot malaga, which is vanilla ice cream, raisins, raisins and whipped cream, peach flumery, or lemon tort, ice creams or cheese. So here is my peach. Flumery. 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 And Paul is chocolate brownie with all the popcorn. Yes. What do you think to that then? 
I know some of you like popcorn. Mm. They're holding the camera right now so they can't have any. You need to look at the camera, honey. Not me. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> We had a great meal tonight and it was finished off perfectly when we were visited by two of the main chefs. With dinner done, we headed to the Broadway Lounge. The show tonight was called Elementum. It was a different type of show tonight, but we thoroughly enjoyed it nonetheless. Next stop was the atrium where we enjoyed some cocktails and caught the end of Vitali, the saxophonist's set. First pina colada. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> well, that's not bad. <laughs> this was followed by the very talented operatic singer Jason Keeler. Probably time we turned in, we noticed two people waving at us from the lift. It was only that Mark and Marie Travels, the bad influencers from episode 3. Should we do the sensible thing and go to bed? Or join them at bar 11? I'm sure you know the answer to that one. What was supposed to be one for the road turned into some mad dance moves and some amazing smoky cocktails. So that was the end of another fab night, and as you can see by the photos, Mark and Marie really enjoyed this house as well. It was now 3am and definitely time for bed. Tune in to episode 5 to see what we got up to next. <laughs>